morning and welcome to Faith and Healing School. Hope everybody had a great holiday weekend. Here we are to celebrate the Lord once more. Thank you, Father God, for this glorious day, and I thank you, as always, for the privilege to stand here. What an honor it is to be able to tell the world how much you love them. Everything that you have and done for us this whole past weekend, celebrating Resurrection Sunday, was all about love. How much Jesus loved us to go through all that for us, for people he didn't even know. People who didn't even exist yet. And how much God loved us that he sent Jesus. Separated himself from him. From his only son. Father, I yield to you today. A vessel for you to use. Holy Spirit, guide all the words that I speak today. Just have your way here. Meet everyone listening at their point of need. Speak to their hearts. Speak to their minds. Let them all come expecting to receive from you. Everyone that comes expecting is never disappointed. You are always faithful, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to open with confirming our confession of faith. For some of you, it may be the first time if you've never made Jesus your Lord and Savior. This is your opportunity right now. We just finished Resurrection Sunday, Good Friday, Palm Sunday, speaking all about what Jesus did. It was the blood that he shed that washed away our sins, that took the penalty of sin and death away from us. He paid the price. But it's not automatically yours. It's something you got to do. You got to believe everything that was just talked about the past week and a half. You have to believe it in your heart that God sent his son down to earth, that he became a man. And then he was crucified us that he died spent three days in hell and God raised him up from the dead and he's seated now at the right hand of the father in glory doesn't matter what you did right up to the time before this started today all you got to do is ask God to forgive you and because of what Jesus did your sins are wiped clean at the asking. And then confess that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe it in your heart. It's Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart today. I give you my life. That's what we do. We confess it. Reaffirm it to ourselves. Let ourselves hear it. It's important. It's important to constantly be filling your mind with the positive things, the things of the word, that you belong to Christ once you make that decision, your decision to make. Once you do that, everything else in this book belongs to you. Everything else in the Bible, God's word, it's God's word to you. Ephesians chapter 1. These are our Ephesians and Colossians prayers. Once we've confirmed our salvation, we've confirmed that we belong to the Lord, that we are believers, we can confidently pray, pray these prayers, these two prayers from Ephesians and a prayer from Colossians. We can pray them with such confidence and conviction and come expecting that God's going to meet us, that God's going to teach us things. Each and every time we go to his word, each and every class that we watch, 
fill up on the word. We're going to talk about the word getting into your mind, getting into your head. You can go back to our YouTube channel, AGC TV One. There's over 700 episodes of Faith and Healing School now. 700. There's no excuse not to be filling up on the word. It's just a couple clicks away on your phone, with your tablet, your computer, and you can get the word in you. You can hear the word. You can get scriptures that pertain particularly to your life. God will speak to you through every episode of this class. Ephesians chapter 1. I pray to you, the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better. Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth your people will inherit. I will know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength with me, a believer. You worked with that same strength when in power in Christ when you brought him back to life and gave him the honor position, the one next to you, the Father on the heavenly throne. Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, and all the names that can be named, not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him. You have made him the head of everything for the good of the church. The church is his body and completes him in everything, in every way. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm asking you, God, to give me a gift from the wealth of your glory. I pray that you would give me your inner strength and power through your spirit, that Christ will live in me through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. This way, with all God's people, I'll be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep your love is. I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I am praying this so I will be completely filled with you, Father God. Glory belongs to you, whose power is at work in me. And by your power, you can do infinitely more than I could ever ask or imagine. Glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 13. For this reason, I have not stopped praying about this. I ask you, God, to fill me with your knowledge, the knowledge of your will through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. I ask this so I will live the kind of life that proves I belong to you. Then I will want to please you with every, in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you. you a, I ask you to strengthen me by your glorious might with all the power that I need to patiently endure everything with joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light, which is what you want me to inherit. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness and you brought me into the kingdom of your son whom you love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The title of the class is also the title of the devotion that went out this morning. It's called Get Your Head in the Game. You'll hear coaches shout that phrase at their players when they're, when they're not focused on the task at hand. Their mind is drifting around on other things, and they're not achieving as they should. In order to experience God's best, especially in the area of healing, Christians must get their head in the game. In fact, science has proven that many physical symptoms are brought on by what people are thinking. It's not a long, complicated process, but it does take diligence, dedication, and perseverance. We must get our heads in the game by filling them with God's word. First, it will change your thinking. And then it will change how you're feeling. Hebrews 4, verse 12 in the Amplified says, For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It's not just a book. It's not just ink on pages. 
This is God's word. It's living and active. It's full of power, operative, energizing, and effective. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and the spirit, the completeness of a per person, of both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing, judging, and our very thoughts and intentions of the heart. There isn't any part of the body that that word can't penetrate. But it's got to get in through your mind, through your eyes. You've got to hear it. You've got to read it. And once it gets inside of you, then it can go to work. Start healing those physical ailments. Dedicate some serious time to reading the Bible. You will soon realize a change in your mood, your thinking, and your emotions. And that naturally translates to better physical health. Get your head in the game. 2 Corinthians 10.5, this is the King James Version. Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Casting down the imaginations. That exalts itself against the knowledge of God. How are you going to know what to cast down if you don't know what the knowledge of God is? you got to put the word in. So when you know when somebody's saying something, that's contrary to it. The easy read version of that goes like this. And we tear down every proud idea that raises itself against the knowledge of God. We also capture every thought and make it give up and obey Christ. You have to know what the word says or you won't know what's contrary to it. God's word is the final word. It is the truth. If you don't know what the truth is, you can, you'll believe anything that sounds like a fact. Anything that sounds good. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. What they said must be what I have. Read the word. God's word is the final word. It says you're healed. Take control of the situation by filling your mind with God's powerful words. Get your head in the game, and you'll soon see victory. The word of God is living and active, full of power making it operative, energizing, and effective. Get that in. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the Amplified. Get those words rattling around in your head. Meditate on those. The Word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. Isaiah 55, 11 says, God says, my word will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that what I set it out to do. That's what God says. That's what we need to be putting in. Sometimes we drift away. We're not putting enough word in. When you don't put enough word in, everything around you is going to come down on you. There's very little positive stuff going around. A lot of negativity. A lot of aggravation. A lot of stress. If you don't fill up on the word, if you don't fill up on that energy, that power, the living word of God, it's going to beat you down. It's going to make you, the world's going to make you miserable. That's the devil stealing from you. He's stealing the joy. He's stealing life. 1 Peter 5, 9 through 10 says, But resist him. Be firm in your faith against his attack. 
rooted, established, immovable, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. You do not suffer alone. After you suffered a little while, the God of all grace who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, establish you, making you what you ought to be. Get those words in you. We're going to take a beat sometimes. You're not the only one. Everybody experiences it. Resist. How do you do that? You get your head in the game. Get in the word. Get the word in your head and get your head in the game. James 4, 7. Amplified classic. So be subject to God. Subject yourself to God. There's no better way to do that than to sit down and read the word. Become a subject. God. Resist the devil. Stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. He can't stay where the word is. Fill up on the word. He can't stay there. He's the, actual, he's the opposite of the word. The word is the truth, and he is nothing but lies. 2 Timothy 4, 17 and 18. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the gospel message might be fully proclaimed. The good news, fully proclaimed, all parts of it, all parts of salvation, health, healing, prosperity, sound mind, and eternity in glory in heaven. We prayed part of that in the Colossians thing, that we live the kind of life that proves we belong to the Lord, that makes us able to share the light. It goes on, so I was delivered out of the jaws of the lion, and indeed the Lord will certainly deliver you, deliver and draw me to himself from every assault of evil. He will preserve and bring me safe unto his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The devil roams around like a roaring lion. And God's word says we were delivered from the jaws of the lion. We were delivered. Circ in cir circumstances and situations that the lion, as a lion, He's not. He's just looking to devour like a lion, like a hungry lion. That's what he's doing. He doesn't have the strength. He doesn't have the dignity of a lion. Jesus is the lion of Judah. He's the royalty. He's the strength. The only thing that's compared that the devil has is that hunger to steal from you. As a lion hungers, as it roams around looking for food, seeking what it can devour. Resist the devil, and he will flee. You have to get the word in. You have to get your head in the game. 1 Kings 3.14, And if you will go my way, keep my statutes and my commandments, as your father David did, then I will lengthen your days. How do you go God's way, keep his statutes and keep his commandments if you don't know what they are? You have to read the word. Then what will happen? I'll lengthen your days. Sounds like you'll be healthy, right? Long days means you're going to be healthy. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, before all time, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. Then we jump to John, 1 John 4, 4, little children, 
You are of God. You belong to him and have already defeated and overcome the agents of the Antichrist. Because he who lives in you is greater, mightier than he who is in the world. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he comes and takes residence up in you. And John says Christ is the word to begin with. So the word takes residence in you. You have to keep putting that word in. Put it in because it's greater than the world. And anything that the world wants to throw at you. Kenneth Hagin's health food devotions this morning, one sentence in there said, spirit-filled believers should be conscious, conscious, conscious of the healing power of God and the life of God that is in them. They can do it if they'll wait on God, meditate on his word, and pray. Spirit-filled believers should be conscious. In your brain, you got to be aware of what the word says. Of the healing power of God. Because greater is he that's in you than everything of this world. Sickness is, is of this world. Not of heaven, not of God. Sickness, disease, poverty, lack, emotional problems, mental instability. That's the world. You have to get it into your head. That God's in, inside of you. The healing power of God resides in you. Science calls it psychosomatic. It's an adjective which means of a physical illness or other condition caused or aggravated by a mental factor such as internal conflict or stress. They used it in a sentence, her doctor was convinced that most of Edith's problems were psychosomatic. You got to get your head in the game. Get it in the word. Fill up. Drive out all those things the devil's trying to tell you. Resist him. Got to fill up on the word. 1 Peter 1.13 in the Amplified Classic says, so brace up your minds. Strengthen them. Brace them up. Like they would brace up a wall of a fortress when they knew the enemy was coming. Strengthen the sides where they knew the attack was coming from. God tells us to brace up our minds. Be sober, circumspect, morally alert. Say your hope holy and unchangeably on the grace and divine favor that is coming to you. Brace up your minds. Strengthen them with the word. Philippians 4, 8 through 13. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, and is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. Brace up your minds. Practice what you have learned and received and heard in me and model your way on living on it. And the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. It's all talking about starting in your head. Untroubled, undisturbed, well-being, peace. I was very happy in the Lord that now you have revived your interest in my welfare after so long a time. You were indeed thinking of me, but I had no opportunity to show it. Now that I am implying that I was in personal, I'm not implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned 
how to be content, satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed, disquieted in whatever state I am. In his mind, he had already established in his mind, it doesn't matter what's going on, what I'm going through. I'm not disturbed. I'm at peace. So that those circumstances can't multiply and cause any uh, undue effects on his body. He goes on, I know how to be abased and live humbly in straitened circumstances, and I know also know how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. If you're in the Word of God, if you're full of the Word, when things get a little tough, you don't fall apart. I have learned that in any and all circumstances, the secret of, face, the secret of facing every situation whether well-fed or going hungry, having sufficiency or enough to spare, or going without and being in want. How do you learn to, how to deal with all circumstances? Through God's Word. He tells us how to do it. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. Empowers, that comes from the inside. And I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. The word. We know that Jesus is the word, so put the word in there. I have strength for all things in the word who, who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through the word who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in the word's sufficiency. Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that is written. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong, vigorous, and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You got to get the word in. You got to get the word into you. Get your head in the game. Those aren't just words he was speaking to Joshua. For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. That's why he told Joshua, don't let it depart from your mouth. Meditate on my word day and night. Then you'll be prosperous. And you should deal wisely and have good success. Wherever you go, God will be with you. Colossians 3.16 in the Amplified Classic. Let the word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your hearts and minds and dwell in you in all its riches as you teach and admonish, admonish and train one another in all insight and intelligence and wisdom in spiritual things. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, make a melody to God with his grace in your hearts. Let the word have its home in your hearts and minds. You've got to put it in. You've got to open the book. You've got to study his word. The more things you have going on around you, the more things coming at you, the more you've got to step, step, step back, refocus, and fill up on the word. Get your head in the game. It's not just about your body. 
Your body will follow. It's not just the Bible that says it, but science confirms it. Psychosomatic. Physical illness or other condition caused or aggravated by mental factors such as internal conflict or stress. Mental factors. If you're filling your mind with, word, with the word of God, if you're filling your mind with the word of God, which is living and active, it's full of holy power. It's operative, energizing, and it's effective. then that's going to affect your physical well-being and conditions. It's effective. There's nothing negative in God's word. Everything he says is true. Everything he says is for our benefit. He tells us if we put his word in, we'll lengthen our days. His word is medicine. His word is powerful. Third John chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. Putting the word in and doing things God's way, it's going to make you physically well. Filling your mind with the things of God. Moves things in a positive direction. His word is energizing, it's effective. It's full of power. If you read that on a bottle of juice, you drink it. If you saw it on a vitamin bottle, you take them. This product is living and active. This, this juice is full of power. It's energizing and it's effective. That stuff would be flying off the shelves. Here it is. Right here. You have to take it in. Put it in your mind. Get your head in the game. Dedicate serious time to reading the Bible. You will soon realize a change in your mood, your thinking, and your emotions that naturally translates to better physical health. Get your head in the game. Thank you, Father, for this time that we had here today. I think that your word went forth. Your powerful, your energizing, life-giving word went forth from here. And you promise that it does not return to you void but it accomplishes that that you sent it to do. You sent your word to heal, to touch lives, to set people free. Jesus is the word, and he said that I came that you'd have life abundantly to the full till it overflows. That's here and now. That's your will for us. That's what your word says. People need to get their head in the game and fill up on that. And all the blessings and all the promises will become theirs, become real in their lives. Thank you, Father. I ask you to wrap your loving arms around everyone that hears this message. Lord, meet them each at their point of need. Speak to their hearts as they fill your mind with your word.
God bless you all. Thank you and have a wonderful day.